Hello everybody, Johnny D here, and today we will be putting together this sub $500 budget gaming PC that actually handles 1080p gaming pretty good. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have an idea if this is something worth doing. Now, we're going to be using Amazon, and this is going to be an all-new parts build. Alright, let's take a look at the system. So here we have a sub $500 gaming build. Uh, we used all-new parts from Amazon. It actually looks pretty nice for the price. Uh, we did add some extra parts. We did add an aftermarket cooler and some cable extensions because... Or aesthetics over everything. Even without the aftermarket cooler and cable extensions, it does perform quite well for the price. Now, there are two reasons we were able to keep this build under $500. Number one, we went with the AM4 platform, which is much cheaper than, let's say, uh, the LGA platform. We also use this $140 5500 XT graphics card, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. Let's talk about the case. This is a Montec Air 100. Uh, it's a very popular case. I've used this case before. I picked this up over on Amazon for $59.99. Now, you don't have to go with this case. You can go with any case under $60. It has some pre-installed fans. Um, but, you know, it does look good, and for the price, I don't think you can go wrong. Let's talk about the graphics card. Here we have the Azurex graphics card. You can find this on Amazon for $140, brand new. Uh, you know, let's take a look at this graphics card. It's nothing special. It's kind of on the cheap side. It's all plastic, but it does give you three display ports out and one HDMI out. Uh, it does, in fact, it is a RX 5500 XT. And you know, for $140, brand new, um, I don't think you can go wrong buyer protection and all that stuff from Amazon so that's a good thing so we're gonna give it a go let's talk about the CPU and motherboard combo so for the CPU we went with the AMD Ryzen 5 4500 this is a 6 core 12 threaded processor it has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz now when this was first released uh, it got it got a little bit of a bad rap because it was released at hundred and thirty dollars but coming in at a price point of $78 brand new, it fits perfectly into our budget and it's going to do a good job for the graphics card that we're pairing with. Now, for the motherboard, we went with the Azeroc B450M AC R2.0. Uh, this has included Wi-Fi. It's, you know, nothing special. It does have some heat sinks in it. Uh, the AIO is a little bit to be desired, but for the budget, it's going to do nicely comes in I think about $78 so for the storage we just went with a 512 gigabyte drive this is from King spec came in at a whopping uh, $37.99 and for the RAM you really just need any kit 16 gigabytes 3200 megahertz CL 16 um, at the time of the video Lexar was coming in at $34.99 but feel free to go with a different kit whatever's cheaper at the time and then last, we have a 500-watt power supply by AGB. This came in at $43. Uh, it should do the job for what we're doing here today. So all in, we're at $467 total for all parts. And if you want to do the optional parts, uh, they come in at $20 for the cable extensions and around $21 for the CPU cooler. Now, with the build out of the way, let's jump into some benchmarks and some gameplay to see if she can really perform. Alright, first up we have Time Spy. And in Time Spy, we achieved a score of 4,902, a graphic score of 4,645, and a CPU score of 7,141. Now, with a score of 4,902, if you're going to go price to performance, uh, it cost us less than one cent per point. Interesting fact. All right, next up we got Fortnite. So in Fortnite, we are on performance settings. And in performance settings, we're achieving at some times up to 200 FPS. But realistically, we're bouncing back and forth between 160 to 190 FPS during gameplay, depending on the action and what's going on. But very playable, good performance here. I don't see any issues playing this game. Next up, we got Apex Legends. In Apex Legends, we got everything set to low. 
I do have the frame capped at 170, but uh, we're not going to hit that too often. So, in the front of the map, we're getting around 110 to 130 FPS. As we move around to the back, we're peaking out of 170 FPS. So, very playable, looking really good. I don't see any issues playing this game either. Here we are in Ratchet and Clank. We are on low settings, FSR enabled, and we are struggling to maintain that 60 FPS average. Uh, the game is very playable, but you are going to struggle if you go on higher settings. Uh, so, you know, as you get into these newer AAA titles, uh, you definitely have to reduce settings and, and maybe even resolution. But at low settings right now, Ratchet and Clank, perfectly playable. Next up, we have Jedi Survivor. Here we're on low settings, FSR enabled, and we're hovering around that 61, 62 mark. Um, it's very playable. It's looking really good. But like I was saying, as you move into those newer AAA titles, it's, this, this card will start to struggle. But right now, low settings, FSR enabled, 62 frames per second, perfectly playable, looking pretty good. Next up, we got Forza Horizon 5. This is the in-game benchmark. We are at high settings, no FSR. And at the end of this run, we achieved an average of 88 frames per second. So this is a well-optimized game. This is pretty much run on anything, so perfectly playable here. Here we are in Tomb Raider, and we are on high settings. So as we go through this run, we're looking pretty good here. Uh, and as we come to the end of this run, we average... We get a frame average of 70 frames per second, which is pretty good. So I, I think you'll have a very enjoyable experience playing this game with this card. Okay, last up, here we are in Cyberpunk. This is the in-game benchmark. We are at medium settings. FSR is set by default to auto. And, you know, considering this is a hard-to-run game, our medium settings, at the end of this run, we're averaging, averaging around 65 frames per second. I think that's a really good showing for this card. Okay, time for some final thoughts. So for $470, I think we put ourselves together a pretty good system. It's a good starting point. Um, but my thoughts on the CPU. The Ryzen 5 4500, although coming in at a great price at $78, it's lacking in one area. It's lacking in L3 cache. Now, an older chip like the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a great gaming chip, uh, comes in new at $110 and used at $67. It has an L3 cache of 32 megabytes as opposed to 8 megabytes on the Ryzen 5 4500. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're struggling in the newer AAA games. But if you notice that the CPU never maxed out. Um, the GPU is at 98, 99%. And I think the highest I saw the Ryzen 5 4500 go-to is about 75%, but still, um, that's one of the reasons why we're struggling. So if you have it in your budget, maybe up it to a Ryzen 5 5500, which has a little more L3 cache and is a better chip, I think uh, you wouldn't struggle so much on these AAA titles. So, what are your thoughts on this system? Is this something you would build? Is this something you think is worth it or should you wait and maybe save a little more money and get a better system I, i'd really like to know your thoughts on it and with that said i think we've come to the end of the video so you all have a great day and thanks for watching bye now